All right, so here we go with the third in a series of reactions that to me look all pretty much the same because I know the similarities between the reactants and how that makes the mechanism similar. So it's not a lot of, as we'd say, cognitive load. It doesn't take a lot of brain power to understand these three examples. If you understand the mechanism and the framework, if you tried to memorize how to make every single ester acid and amide on the planet, then it would take an extreme amount of brain power. But if you understand how esters and amides and acids are formed, you can look at whatever your target is, decompose it into the right starting materials, which they call retrosynthesis. You look at going backwards from the product to the starting materials that you would need, and if you understand the mechanism, it'll be pretty straightforward. So again, acid chloride, very versatile reactant, very reactive, subject to nucleophilic attack by a whole bunch of different molecules. And last time we mentioned that water is reactive with these because of the OH group. And so what else has an OH group in it? An alcohol. So alcohols would react similarly with water and whoop, water alcohol. And then um, if you had something with nitrogen in it, nitrogen and oxygen are right next to each other in the periodic table. So if you have something with nitrogen in it, and this one can have up to three different R groups on it, but to be reactive, it still has to have a hydrogen. So the nitrogen would have a lone pair, a hydrogen, and two other hydrogens or two carbon containing groups but this an amine or an ammonia would react similarly to water or an alcohol in this type of reaction. So water led to hydrolysis and alcohol led to alcoholysis, alcoholysis and then an amine leads to aminolysis which will give you an amide. And I should probably look up how to name amides because I don't think I remember how to name amides and I don't want to try to make something up on the fly because it's not going to correspond to the accepted names. But that's something maybe you could do when you get to the end of the video, see what our product is and see what it would be named. So let's just hop into the mechanism. Again, we'll pick an acid chloride that might be um, interesting. So let's go with Put a phenyl group on there, and then a carbonyl, and the chloride. And whenever you want to try to name one of these guys, you always want to think about the parent acid. So if this chloride was an OH instead, what would this compound be? It would be benzoic acid. So that makes this group a benzoyl group. So you may have heard of benzoyl peroxide, pronounced usually benzoyl peroxide, used in acne medications, but the phenyl carbonyl combination is a benzoyl group. So this is benzoyl chloride. And the reactive part is gonna be the acid chloride part, the carbonyl attached to the chlorine. The phenyl is gonna go along for the ride. So hopefully I'll copy it accurately in each step of the mechanism but nothing reactive is gonna to happen to anything over here. All right, so here's our benzoyl chloride, and let's just add a simple amine, so we don't have to write too much. We can see the general mechanism. We'll go with methylamine. And if you watched the last couple of videos and mastered those mechanisms, this is gonna look, again, exactly the same. So you see the lone pair on the amine is gonna react just like the lone pair on an alcohol or water, and it's gonna go and attack the carbonyl. So we have the nucleophile goes for the electrophile, and when it attacks the carbon, it's gonna, you guessed it, push the pi bond off to be a lone pair and create the negative formal charge oxygen there. 
So, fennel groups along for the ride. Make an X hexagon, throw in the double bonds. The carbonyl now is no longer double bond because that pi bond got pushed off onto the oxygen when the nucleophile came in. And now you have the nitrogen with two hydrogens and a methyl. And if you look at the formal charge on the nitrogen, neutral nitrogen would have five valence electrons. This one gets assigned one, two, three, four. So positive nitrogen there. And then the chlorine is still there. But as you know, in this famous tetrahedral intermediate, has got a leaving group on it that's pretty good. Now in some cases the amine just pops back off, regenerates the starting material, but eventually it's the chloride that pops off. So after you get this tetrahedral intermediate, the chloride becomes the leaving group and it leaves and then this lone pair can move back in and reform the pi bond. So just like the other steps, we regenerate the other reactions we studied, you regenerate the carbonyl, phenyl groups along for the ride, chlorine's gone, so now you have the nitrogen with two hydrogens and a methyl group on here, and this guy is still formally positive. So this should look a little bit like an ammonium because it's got a nitrogen with a positive charge and some hydrogens on it. And the ammonium can be deprotonated by a base. So again, you have a new intermediate after the chloride leaves with the carbonyl in it. This looks like protonated amide, if you're familiar with amides. You're probably not yet, but you will be. So then the lone pair on the chloride goes and grabs one of the H pluses off the nitrogen. The bonding pair becomes the lone pair. And I've said that a few times. Um, the more of these mechanisms I do, the more I see the similarities. So the first step, nucleophilic attack on the carbonyl to form the famous tetrahedral intermediate. The chloride leaving group leaves, regenerating the carbonyl. Then this intermediate just needs to be deprotonated by the chloride, so minus HCl. And then this thing gives you phenyl just along for the ride, the regenerated carbonyl. And we've substituted the chloride for this nitrogen containing group. The amine is hopped in there. We now have a lone pair on this nitrogen and a hydrogen on this nitrogen. So we took off one of the hydrogens, generated a lone pair, the other hydrogen's still there, and this guy is an amide group. If this was a if these were proteins, then this would be a peptide group. So this carbonyl next to a nitrogen in general is an amide group. If these were amino acids, this would be a peptide bond. So you can see how these types of reactions to add nitrogens to carbonyls are really important in biochemistry and if you want to understand nutrition and how our bodies are put together understanding the synthesis of amides is pretty darn interesting of course acid chlorides are so reactive they aren't part of our biology but we use acids or esters in similar types of enzyme catalyzed reactions to form the proteins in our body and other enzymes and other reagents that are made from amino acids. So again, if you're interested in nutrition or how your body works, these types of reactions are really fundamental to that and you can't go without your organic chemistry to learn those types of things. So another repetitive mechanism, nucleophilic attack on the carbonyl, tetrahedral intermediate, chloride leaves, reforming the carbonyl, and then you get this protonated intermediate which is deprotonated to form the final product, and this is an amide. And what I should do is look up, because I haven't named amides in about 25 years, and I don't feel like I'm about to start now, but I probably should. So um, go ahead and shoot me an email with the name of this amide, 
um, and that would be awesome. And compare hydrolysis, the mechanism looks the same. Alcoholysis, the mechanism looks the same. Aminolysis, the mechanism looks the same. So if you identify the type of reagents you have and the type of mechanism that uh, governs the new reaction, you can write the structure stepwise, the formation of the product structure, and get it right, even if you've never seen these reagents before and have never seen this product before. Don't even have to know its name, just how the bonds are formed and how the reaction proceeds. So another identical three-step mechanism, nucleophilic attack on the carbonyl, the chloride leaving, reforming the carbonyl, then deprotonation of an intermediate to give the final product. I mentioned before when we started talking about mechanisms, different books and different individuals will write mechanisms differently. That's one of the reasons I picked this one is it's fairly straightforward and um, it's pretty easy to understand if you understand basic nucleophilic attacks and deprotonations and substitution reactions. Again, this is a type of substitution we're replacing the chloride with an amine group to turn an acid chloride into an amide. So this is a type of substitution reaction. Substitution at a carbonyl. Very good general type of reaction to understand.